the time for another edition of the Romania Show. That's right, yeah. Well, I will tell you right off the bat that today's show is going to be a little bit shorter than yesterday's. I had a lot of things on the backlog I wanted to talk about, and so we went almost an hour. So, I mean, it was good. I had a lot of fun. I actually, uh, just because I'm the one who has to uh, keep a check on these things, I actually had I was had to <laughs> listen to myself ramble on for an hour after I'd already just done it. So, you know, hey, if I can do it, other people can do it. Uh, I just want to say thank you for everybody who uh, sent a nice message. I got a bunch of them, and those are always cool. Of course, there's a few complainers, but what are you going to do, right? That's, uh, that's life. Um, I just want to let you know there is a slight change in the way we're going to be doing things. Uh, my original idea had been to uh, broadcast live and then simultaneously record the show on my computer so that I would have a high-definition uh, version and I could upload that to YouTube. Well, um, to do both things at the same time apparently requires my computer to use every last data bit in a, of memory in its uh, little computer brain, especially when you go for an hour. Um, the final high-definition version on my computer was 10 gigabytes. So what happened was, I believe it was affecting the live version because it was kind of choppy on the on the transmission of the video of the video image, and I'm looking at a much better version uh, on my screen anyway, and we'll see if that works. So I think what we're gonna do, um, you know, this is uh, we're just getting things started here. I think what we're gonna do is Monday through Friday uh, only record the uh, online or live version rather, uh, not recorded on my computer. Um, see how that goes. Uh, this is a free account, by the way, so if I actually end up paying for it, um, I will be able to broadcast in high definition. So, assuming my internet can hold up, uh, you know, we might actually kill two birds with one stone. But at the moment, free account, which means the lim uh, image quality is a little bit degraded. Uh, some of the, the writing in the background is just a little bit fuzzy. And uh, that's what we're going to just have to live with. And then on Saturday or Sunday, uh, when I got a little more time, I'll do more of a, I won't be live, but I'll do more of a produced uh, version, which is what you saw when I first started. Uh, in those days, I was actually re recording myself in one take, and then spending three or four hours, uh, you know, adding the magic, adding the sound effects, and some of the, the visual effects, and the, the cameras and stuff. So, that's what we'll be doing. We'll stay live. Uh, won't be a full hour today, probably, unless uh, I don't know. I get a hundred phone calls or something. But <clears throat> and then we'll uh, run that video on YouTube because it's a whole lot easier. And we'll see if we can't get a better picture quality today. So that's that. So let's start off. Uh, Victor Ponta, who was in Cluj, Unicorn City, where I live, he was here today, uh, hobnobbing with his peoples. He uh, said every week. We find a bomb, and I'm speaking metaphorically, but he's talking about um, principally that uh, Tevere, which is the government system of, uh, te government television system, uh, where they have several channels, is financed through public money. Uh, they're, they're broke, and uh, he was talking about how, oh, you know, the orange team, they screwed everything up, and they were in power, and now uh, we're in power, and it's not our fault because every week we find a bomb. Well, I got news for him, as well as anybody else who knows anything about Romanian politics. There's going to be a bomb uh, when he's out of power. There's, it, that's what the government does. They hide things that are uh, uncomfortable or unpopular from the people because uh, they want to win elections. And then when somebody else comes into power, uh, you blame all the problems on the guys beforehand. I mean, Americans do it between the Republicans and Democrats. The British people do it between Labour and Tory. Uh, I don't speak German, but I imagine the German people do the same thing. Anyway, uh, someone said something really interesting to me last night, which is that, you know, Pontes, uh, you know, when he was in the opposition, the red team was in the opposition, they were always complaining, which, you know, that's kind of their, that's kind of their job. But uh, one of the things they were always complaining about was Romania's uh, contract or agreement. It is kind of a contract as it's signed by the, with the IMF. And, you know, the guy was saying last night, and it's true that uh, literally a week after Ponto was in power, he uh, signed a new deal 
with the IMF that was exactly the same as the last deal. Basically, the IMF came to town and said, uh, listen, buddy, you better do what we say, and that means you better not change one iota from what we already agreed upon. And he's like, oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. You got it, sir. So, you know, talk is cheap, and that's exactly what Ponce is good at. In fact, uh, remember yesterday I was talking about Kovar Laszlo, who was the president of the parliament in Hungary, and he was here in, in Romania. He's gone now, but he was here yesterday, and, you know, we stirred the pot with these crazy Hungarian nationalists, and Ponta originally said, well, you know, if he does anything, I'm going to kick him out. Well, today, uh, in Cluj, he was saying, you know, that guy's not welcome to come back, and he's just no good for nobody, and, uh, you know, in reality, here's the deal, right? The Hungarians exist. They're not going to go away. Uh, they don't get along with anybody. They never have. Nobody likes them. Nobody's ever liked them. Uh, they, people like Hungarian things. People like Hungarian music. People like Hungarian architecture. I know foreigners who come here to Cluj, and they don't know if a Hungarian or Romanian built that building or whatever. And they always like the Hungarian stuff. Okay, people like Hungarian food. People like Hungarian music. People like uh, Budapest. They like the architecture, whatever. But actual international relations between Hungary and everybody else have always been terrible. And the Hungarians just never, it never comes into their head that nobody can stand them. The Austrians couldn't stand them when they were in the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It's got nothing to do with Romania. So the Hungarians are always stepping on people's toes and they're, you know, they're so crazy with their ultra-nationalist crap. And so, you know, Ponto's getting some cheap you know, play. Like, oh, I told him he's not welcome if he comes back. Well, you know what? I got news for you. You're not going to stop him unless he's charged with a crime. He's the he's an important politician. Okay, you don't like him. I don't like him. Nobody likes him. Find five people who like him and don't speak Hungarian. But, you know, hey, you're not going to kick him out. So, anyway, interesting. Also in Cluj today is a, a woman named Monica Makove, who is an orange team person. Nothing to do with Ponta and the red team. Uh, she was here for her own purposes, which is to stump for Emil Balk, a guy I've spoken about already twice on the Romanian show, so I hope you know who he is. He was uh, the mayor of Cluj for a while, and then became the prime minister for probably four years. And Monica Mac he's running for mayor of Cluj again, which the, the voting stops tomorrow. I mean, the, the campaign is closes tomorrow, and the voting is on Sunday. So Monica Makwave used to be, uh, I believe she was the justice minister, maybe that, I'm a little confused, maybe she was the labor minister here in Romania a couple years ago, but anyway, she's, in a, she's now an Orange Team member in the European Parliament, and she said, Emil Bok, he's a powerful man, he's a, a man of honor and courage and all this other crap, right? First of all, no, he's not. He's a, he seems like a very civilized guy, Ponta, a bit of a clown. You know, Emil Bok uh, seems like a dignified man, and I'll give him that. He's not stupid. Uh, I'll respect him on that, but he makes terrible choices, okay? He does. Now, in contrast, you know, he replaced a guy who was a lunatic here in Cluj, who was a Romanian nationalist. This guy was a nut. Uh, you know, when I first came to Cluj, I, you know, it was like there was literally a Romanian flag every five uh, meters down the street. There was Romanian flags on the on the on the walls, on the on the streets. On they painted the park benches red, yellow, and blue, the national colors. That he strung up lights that were red, yellow, and blue. I mean, it, it was like a psychedelic, trippy Romania thing going on. And there's a big statue of a big Hungarian person here in Cluj. And, you know, he couldn't blow it up or destroy it because it would have been, you know, an international incident. So he said, hmm, what can I do? Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll cover it in Romanian flags. So that's what he did. So, plus he was a crook, you know. If he wants to be a crazy nationalist, you know, that's uh, regrettable. And he said a lot of racist stuff. But on top of that, he screwed all the Romanians by being a super crook. So that guy gets replaced by Emil Bok. This was back in... Good gracious, I don't know, 2002, 2004, a long time ago. And in the book, being a sensible guy, a reasonable guy, smart guy, you know, almost anything he did 
in contrast to that, Lunatic was pretty good. So, hey, the people of Cluj were pretty happy about that. Then they elected him again. Then whoosh, got the call. He went down to Bucharest and became the prime minister. January of this year, there were a few protests in the street. Now, I'm going to talk about the protests because that's how all the stuff that's going on in the government happened. I was here, I know exactly what happened, the way it's being portrayed is ridiculous. Uh, essentially what happened was in January, the government, of which Evan Bok, the orange team, was the prime minister, and they fired a man named Red Arafat, who is uh, ethnically a Palestinian, but uh, he's a doctor and he works for the government in the health department, and he's uh, essentially the guy who brought what's called Smurt, uh, into Romania, which is, uh, we'll, we'll call it, uh, advanced paramedics, you know, these uh, very well-equipped ambulances with uh, defibrillators and all that, and flashing lights in the whole nine yards, as well as uh, a few airlifting, what we call medevac in America services, where a helicopter will transport you. In other words, he modernized the emergency response system in terms of medical uh, situations here in Romania. Very popular man, uh, soft-spoken man, doesn't really involve himself in politics, but he did a really good thing for Romania, and he sort of uh, brought the modern ambulance service here, and public, by the way, there's private ambulances too, but some more of this, the public one, and they fired him. Now, why did they fire him? Well, actually, um, he resigned, or uh, I believe he, was, he resigned, then he was rehired, and the protest started because of that. Now, the reason he resigned was because he wanted, that's what it was, he resigned to protest the fact that the government, led by Emil Bok, was cutting funding for the medical services, including the ambulances. You know, genius move here. Now, why were they doing that? They were doing that because the IMF told them to do it. Are there problems in the Romanian medical care system? Most definitely. Uh, that's, no one's going to dispute that, but cutting the budget uh, is not really the solution, and cutting the ambulances that people like to see and know that if they have an accident, uh, will come uh, save their life, it's a bad move. So, spontaneously, people gathered in the street and they protested. And Emil Balk, the Prime Minister, who... Monica Magovese is so courageous and a man of honor, he let this go on for about a week. So, by now, there's a week of protests, and people were mad. I know people went down every day. It was freezing cold. They're out there in the, in the snow and the ice, and they're going, you know, bring back this guy. So, they ended up bringing the guy back, and he still works for the government today, I believe. But, after a week of protests, the orange, I mean, the red and yellow team, who are the opposition, they realized this is a golden opportunity. We got these people out in the street already. We'll pay a few people, we'll organize a few people to join in on the protests, and then we got ourselves like a, a popular revolution kind of thing going on. So that's exactly what they did. So they, now, you know, Arafat, the guy who started the whole thing, or, or because of him, everything began. He's back in the government. Everything's fine. The government, under pressure from the people, said, "All right, we're not going to slash." Um, medical stuff right now. So, red and yellow team, they get thousands of their guys to start protesting. And then a few nut balls started joining in independently. I saw one lady walking around Cluj screaming about abortions or something. You know, totally, when you stir the pot, a few nut balls start coming out. And now we got two or three weeks of people saying, you know, orange team government sucks. Some of it legitimate, spontaneous, some of it was organized very obviously by the red and yellow team. And then so what does Bob do? He just resigns. The whole he, he resigns. The whole government resigns. Now strategically, they were thinking, okay, he'll resign, which he did, and we'll get a new set of our orange people in power, and that'll diffuse the anger. It was a strategic move. And at first it seemed like it was working. They got a new prime minister whose name is uh, Ungurianu. Uh, he speaks in English. Uh, there's a link to several of his interviews in English if you don't know who he is very well. And strategically it seemed like it was working. And uh, got some new people in the office and it seemed like things were going pretty good. But the red and yellow team, you know, they knew they were weak. And 
and they schemed and they plotted. They promised a bunch of people um, some things, and they eventually passed a motion of no confidence in. Orange team, you're out. So if Balk had just, number one, not cut the ambulance service, you know, stupid move, but he had to because the IMF, and number two, just stayed in the government and weathered the protest and, you know, got his own people out or did what, there's a million things they could have done. But smooth move, did made a bad decision, so now Orange Team, you're out of here. I'm not saying the Orange Team is a team of saints, they're not, but they're slightly less crazy than the Red Team. So now, I mean, Balk is in running for mayor of Cluj again, and Monica Makovey comes to bat for him. Now, here's what's really interesting about Monica Makovey, besides being uh, a slightly respected Orange Team member, is that the current ambassador to the United, of the United States to Romania, Gittenstein, he doesn't speak Romanian. He, he can't even read. He doesn't know Bunaziwa. He knows, chop, chop, polish my silver, and, uh, hey, you, uh, go walk my dog, and he knows how to boss people around in English, but he doesn't speak Romanian. He doesn't know what's going on. He's, I don't know what's going on. So Monica Makove, who speaks English, she's a pretty smart lady. Um, she's his number one confidant, or he, she, she could tell him what's going on. So she's in complete control over what the United States ambassador gets uh, information about Romania. And then he turns around and calls the president, or the vice president in this case, and all the Romanian uh, strategy that's going through the embassy is because of that lady, so she's got an incredible amount of power, just not so much in Romanian politics domestically. Now, conversely, uh, Karlin Popescu Taricianu, who Romanians used to call, uh, what did they used to call him? They used to call him uh, Scumpy Chai, right, which means uh, like Mr. Expensive, he was the Prime Minister for four years before Balk, he's a yellow team member. Today, not included, she said, uh, I mean, Bok was just a rag, and Bosescu used him to wipe up spills and treat him like a little houseboy, basically. So, he's defending Mr. Ponta. This is uh, Tariciano, you know, he raised a bunch of prices, too. I don't really know why these people are all competing to see how great they are when we, everybody knows they're a bunch of scumbags. So, yeah, Tariciano had a few nice words to say about Bok calling him a rag that the president uses to wipe up spills. And also, uh, popping his head up was Jon Iliescu, who I was surprised to learn he was even you know, alive and not living in a hospital bed because he's about 10,000 years old. Old, old communist. Old communist! And he was also the president of Romania from 1990 to 96 and 2000 to 2004. Essentially, Romanians had three presidents, and uh, Iliescu was the first one. Um, a guy named uh, Constantinescu was briefly in power for four years, and people can barely remember who he was, because Iliescu was a thug. And uh, most people know him very well, because in 1990, you know, about a year after the revolution, there was a demonstration in Bucharest, a big one, thousand, thousand people, way bigger than this crap this year that... You know, 2,000 people, 5,000 people, whoop de whoop Well, tens of thousands of people were in Bucharest in 1990, and Iliescu straight up, you know, pulled a communist move. He called in some heavies, called in some thugs, and they came to Bucharest and beat the snot out of the protesters, and a few protesters actually got killed. Now, tragically, and, you know, Iliescu hasn't been in power since 2004, so I don't really know why... Romania is still dragging his heels, but the deaths of the protesters, that case in Romania is technically still open. Now, everyone knows what happened. They were clearly killed under the direction of Iliescu and the government, but the families of these poor people had to go all the way to the European Court of Human Rights to win their case and get some money, and, you know, they did win, and this was just a couple months ago, and now the Romanian government has to pay them not that it brings your kids back, but, you know, Romania's like, well, we still haven't figured it out, you know, we close the case all the way. Yeah, if you want to solve the case, you can solve the case. So, anyway. Uh, you can see I've mixed up the Twitter a little bit, so it's behind me, and if you want to see your Twitter on there, if, if you're a Twitter account person, just use the hashtag 
theromaniashow.com and I got it set up a little bit different today so that hopefully uh, last yesterday I was using a different setup and it was uh, causing some freezes in my computer so hopefully this way it will be a little bit better even though it's a little bit less uh, visible the way I'm looking at it right now but you may if you squint you know use get your grandma get your grandma's glasses and uh, grandma I need your glasses for a minute I gotta see who, who's writing Twitter on the, on the internet and uh, you know remember what I said about him and in the cutting the, the medical budget the IMF told him to do it and the red team Ponta you know Yesterday I saw that he's actually only been in power a month. It seems like about 10, 10 years because he's such a douche. But uh, it was funny because they ran, they ran a little like one month perspective. What's Ponta been doing since he's been in prison? Since he's been in office, and it's everything I've covered on this show. <laughs> so kind of shows you getting the 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 whole dope here. And uh, yeah, that was interesting. So anyway, oh Ilyescu, why did I even bring him up? Because he popped his head up and said. He's the honorary president of the red team, by the way. He doesn't have any technical power, but, you know, in homage to this great man who, you know, shot a bunch of protesters. Uh, he's the president of the red team, honorary president. And he, today, he said, oh, Ponta, he's my boy. He's, you know, he's cool. He's awesome. Well, apparently that's a good thing, because otherwise the red team would have told him to go jump on a lake. But, oh, see... Ponta, I mean, Iliescu, he supports me, so... Anyway, I noticed today, uh, switching subjects, that uh, Livio Pop, who is an uh, interim idiot education minister, he said, we're going to go with cameras this year on the baccalaureate, the baccalaureate in regular English, and don't worry, this is, this is Romania, it cracks me up, he said, don't worry, the cameras are going to be focused on the kids and not on the doorways and windows. Now, what I forgot to mention, because uh, I knew it, but I forgot that not everybody else knows it, was that last year, when they used these cameras, uh, the scores uh, were the lowest they had been in 20 years, nationwide. Now, a few, a few set places did okay, but, and, uh, you know, it was this big scandal, oh, our kids are stupid, or they're lazy, or they're not studying, or uh, the cameras are preventing some corruption or you know cheating and that kind of stuff so you know the cameras are coming back this year um, they just ordered 5,000 cameras of course they're not gonna be everywhere but you know it's Romania if you do half half so you do so half of something that's considered doing all of it so 5,000 cameras is enough for a nation of I don't know how many millions of children are taking this exam so now, what nobody else talks about was that if you fail the baccalaureate, or it actually has several different sections, and you can pass one and fail the other, is that you can get a chance to take it again a few months later. Well, I believe it was September, because the exams are right around this time, and then September is the makeup exams, or the second chance. Well, last year, uh, obviously, a number of people failed. It was the lowest uh, success rate in 20 years. Well, when they did the retake exam, there were no cameras. And guess what? Shh, results were still down. So, do the cameras have anything to do with it? Who knows? I mean, um, I, I'm not, I don't have any high school age children in school in Romania, so I don't know exactly what's going on, but uh, there were a lot of jokes last year, and uh, we'll see how it goes, because. Uh, it's kind of a bad situation if it turns out that the kids are really uh, not getting the picture or I don't know what's going on, but don't worry, we got the cameras and they're going to be right on the kids. So uh, I don't know why they would be on the windows. <laughs> it's Romania, you never know why people say what they say. Anything else we got to talk about? Oh yes, one more thing. Uh, um, Ponta, I mean, literally one month in power. You're fired! Another person got fired. It was uh, Julius Pravetti. Pravet. I can't I don't know exactly how to pronounce his name. He was the chief of the ANRE, which is the Energy Regulatory Agency here in Romania. Uh, you might remember on my show last week, I talked about how the vice president of that agency was fired for 
daring to suggest that a 5% hike in energy costs uh, for regular consumers was not that big of a deal. And Ponce was like, oh, how dare you, sir? How dare you admit the truth? Which is exactly what it was. I mean, right now, the low, the currency is down 10%. More against the euro and the dollar, so you know, inflation wise alone, uh, you know, the prices have already gone up if you want to look at it that way. And uh, <laughs> I'm getting some fun requests here on the Twitter, uh, meow. So there we go. Uh, anybody else want to join in the Romania show hashtag? One day, you know, there's gonna be a whole bunch of them, but uh, uh, the truth is that uh, this guy. Julius Plavetti, who was the president, got fired and replaced by, of course, yellow team guy. You know, I want to punt this boys because this uh, Julius guy had been running the agency for three years and doing a fine job, I guess. And, you know, Ponte had to slip in one of his guys. And, you know, they said, well, you know, why are you firing this guy? He didn't even say anything. And in this particular case, they go, well, we discovered. You know, these Sherlock Holmes here, we discovered. No, you didn't discover. It was public knowledge. The guy admitted it. It's not a secret. He owns a, a, a company called Gascorp, which is a, an engineering and consulting firm. Not a secret. Everybody knew it. It wasn't like he was hiding it. And they're saying, oh, well, you know, it's like a conflict of interest. Like suddenly, you know, they're um, super moral, you know, pious saints running the government and, you know, this guy, public knowledge, has admitted, not admitted, he filled out the paperwork and, and filed it with the government. When you work for the government, uh, you have to file a piece of paperwork that explains everything that you own, and that includes companies. And this guy filed the paperwork a year ago or two years ago. I own an engineering firm that does technical consulting work. And I'm running the Energy Regulatory Agency. Everybody knew it. You know, no, no big deal before. I'm not saying the guy's some kind of squeaky clean uh, smurfy saint or anything, but you know. You're fired! Now we got one of our other guys. So, Ponta, been in power one month and one day. Feels honestly like a <laughs> hundred years, but the elections are coming up on Sunday. We'll see how they do. Uh, I saw some pretty strong words um, being said by some people, and. Whatever happens on Sunday, the national elections are going to happen um, later this fall. And uh, I have a feeling the tensions are going to be rise. And I saw just on the little uh, cryon, as we call it, the, the scrolling thing on the bottom, that um, yesterday a, a group of uh, orange team members and a group of red team members, just regular supporters, you know, actually got into a fist fight and a brawl. I mean, tensions are running high, and every politician, especially the Looney Tune ones who live in here and remain a lot of them, have been saying the most inflammatory things and trying to get people riled up. And some of the media, which is, of course, owned by certain partisan interests, you know, they're stoking the flames and, you know, saying, like, I mean, um, one particular newspaper has been, you almost think that, you know, they're being paid by the guy to write all this stuff that they've been saying bad about him. The mayor of Bucharest. They don't like him. We get it. You know, try being a journalist. You know, write about something else once in a while. There's plenty of things going on. I'm writing, I'm publishing stuff that people, oh, well, we had a good time for that. But, you know, here's another 500-page uh, article, a 500-word article about how crappy the mayor is. Okay, got it. Okay, so let's end on a positive note. Uh, kids, you having fun today? Yeah. All right, sweet. Uh, Timmy, you doing okay? Yeah. All right, Timmy's doing okay. So we're going to wrap up the show half an hour today. And I thank you all for watching. And like I said, uh, during the weekend, we're going to, um, you know, try making a little bit more of a produced show because... It has some jokes and some bits and that kind of stuff. Plus, other things are coming up, so I'm surprised. So, stay tuned for that. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. All right, folks. Thank you so much.